liked, I like Nick's style, so I'm just going to steal it. Let's get this out of here. Good to go. I'll speak on climate innovation. Let's start with cooling our spaces. Right now, we know we need more of this, especially in hot climates. We think of that as an active process. What if instead our surfaces could passively cool the environment around us? By that, I mean engineered surfaces that radiate their heat to space. So you put them in full sun, they'll start cooling down. That's called passive daytime radiative cooling. It's just one of many innovations I think are critical to meeting our communal climate goals. So I work a lot with innovators. We have some here in the room. They feel a lot like this pretty frequently. I see some nods. Yes, innovators. That's this worry of running out of runway, of failing. But you guys are the heroes. You are who we need to build that future decarbonized economy. And your success matters a lot to us. I'll admit it's hard. Many climate innovators have failed. Many more will fail. In the VC industry where I work, we call this the valley of death. So you start over here with a great idea. You get into building the business. You might not make it over to commercial success and major carbon reductions. And many ask, isn't climate innovation just a red herring? We don't need it. Let's scale the things that work. Let's just focus on that. I disagree. I think we need both innovation and scale to really unlock that thriving decarbonized economy of the future. First step, agreed, we need to scale solar, wind, EVs, efficiency, all that as fast as possible. But the IEA says we'll still have a gap. One third of our emissions reductions come from tech that's at prototype or demonstration stage. And there's three big chunks of that innovation I'll speak about. First, climate tech that's an accelerant that makes other things go faster. Second, climate tech for the end game, those hard to abate sectors. And lastly, climate tech that is a true game changer. All these, I'll give some examples. Let's start with our power grids need to shift fast. We know this, we need new and different types of energy storage. So this company, Energy Dome, uses compressed CO2 to give weeks and months of long duration energy storage, helping those grids shift faster. In a lot of developing world, two and three wheel vehicles are the, are the norm. So this solution from Race Energy is an easy hand swappable battery to electrify that transit so that urban pollution and emissions can be slashed together. Now when you think about um, the buildings we're in, especially in cold climates, windows are your biggest vulnerability. This drop-in solution from Luxwall is a vacuum insulated panel. It cuts both your energy consumption and makes the building more comfortable. And it's built on advanced manufacturing, which is a theme. Well, we know for the end game, we need a lot of steel for this future economy. Uh, this solution here from Ferrum uses low temperature hydrogen and a new smelter to make zero carbon steel possible today. At the same time, our new urban environments are going to require a lot of concrete. So I love this solution from Occam Works Labs. Um, they use mycelium, which is the root structure of mushrooms, to make a structural element much the same as concrete, but instead of emitting, it absorbs carbon. As we think about our ag sector, right now it's a huge source of emissions. But if you can use a drop-in replacement for cattle feed here from Mutrol, it cuts ruminant emissions by 40% and eliminates the need for additional antibiotics. Now, if we think about game changers, I already talked about one, so passive daytime radiative cooling. We also need deep and horizontal drilling for geothermal electricity from Ever. Aikido and others are doing floating offshore wind. If we can crack fusion cost effectively, that's a game changer for all of our power grids. So I believe all these are built on this foundation of human ingenuity, not drilling for scarce fossil resources. And so they're gonna get better and faster as they work together. Yet I do, I do worry, I'll admit, um, our founders um, really face some, some real barriers. They have imbalances that I think are threatening this global innovation ecosystem that often also leaves out a lot of dis disrepresented groups in this transition. The first of these is just the amount of money required. Most estimates say it's $100 trillion by 2050 to make this climate shift. That's a mind-boggling amount of money. It's also a big investment opportunity. But today, a lot of that money goes to what I think of as the sexy tech. Come on, slide, thank you. Um, <laughs> And that's anything that looks like a drop-in replacement for fossil fuels, um, anything that looks like it could be you know, a Tesla or a trillion dollar company, that's where the money goes. And it leaves out a lot of these niche innovations I've talked about that need that funding and support. Geographically, I point out all of Sub-Saharan Africa today has less installed solar than the cloudy country of the Netherlands. And that reflects this deep bias that the global south is being left out of this climate opportunity. Yet I remain really hopeful. I think we will build this bridge so that innovators, many folks here, will cross to the other side and avoid the valley of death, 
avoid the worst ravages of climate change, and unlock a thriving future. Thank you so much for your time.